everyone and welcome to chapter 6 part 2a and this is protein synthesis wheels now before we start let's start with this question how does the nucleus control all activities of the cell how now what do we mean by activities we mean by chemical reactions in the cells and all chemical reactions are technically controlled by enzymes and all enzymes are made for proteins so working back we realize that hey the nucleus controls our activities from the cell by controlling protein synthesis that dna contains information for synthesis of proteins uh, this dna and all these genes, by the way, this gene, the total set of all these genes is called the genome, and all these different uh, genes, which is the region of DNA which codes for polypeptide specific sequence of DNA, which codes for polypeptide, important definition. Um, these genes code for individual proteins, it determines the exact sequence of amino acid, it determines the primary structure, and therefore the secondary tissue, important structure as well, and therefore the function. In conclusion, the simple answer is DNA. Nucleus controls all activities of cell, but DNA, it has genes that codes for proteins and determines the exact sequence of amino acid. The question is, how? Now, there are a few parts in the process according to the 2022 syllabus. Number one is transcription, where DNA is copied to mRNA. That's what transcribe means in English. It means copy, transcription. DNA is copied to mRNA. This takes place in the nucleus. Number two, there's RNA processing. RNA doesn't become mRNA immediately. It needs to go through some processing and modification in order for it to be ready for translation, which is the third part. Translation is where mRNA is translated into a polypeptide chain, which is a protein. Translated. Why is it called translated? Because DNA and RNA are nucleotides, so it's like a different language compared to proteins. So there is a translation process that happens there. Now, before we move on, you might be wondering, okay, why do we need to have RNA processing? Now, that's because this is the gene structure. A gene consists of exons and introns. And in exons are um exons are coding sequences, whereas introns are non-coding sequences. All of them become RNA or pre-RNA, the primary RNA transcript at first. So all of it gets copied. Then the introns, which are not coding for the protein, right, gets spliced out, and then the exons get joined together, and now the mRNA is kind of ready for translation. We'll go into that in more detail later on. Anyways, those are the three processes. Let's look at more things before we look at the process. Um, now, before we start, we have to realize that there is a lot of code going on. The DNA and RNA as well uses a code of three nucleotide bases. The DNA code is called triplet code. Three bases code for one amino acid. All right, but you have to realize that there are four probabilities for each position. So there are 64 possible different triplet codes, 4 times 4 times 4. But there's only 20 amino acids. Now, this is because more than one triplet code can code for the same amino acid. And therefore, we say that the triplet code is degenerate, which means it has some redundancy. For example, CA, CAG, CAT, and CAC all code for the amino acid valine. So multiple triplet code can code for the same amino acid. Now, in DNA, it's called the triplet code, uh, by the way. So 
DNA. That code is called the triplet code, three bases. In the RNA, however, later on we'll see that in the RNA, three bases are called codon. And three bases in DNA, three bases RNA, would code for one amino acid in the protein. Yeah, so you've got to get that properly named. Okay, now let's look at the things we need for our first stage, which is transcription, actually, for translation as well. But yeah, these are things we need for protein synthesis in general. We need to understand that things happen in the nucleus and things happen in the ribosome. And a lot of things involve these types of RNA. Messenger RNA, transfer RNA, and ribosomal RNA. Messenger RNA is what the DNA is copied into. Transfer RNA, you'll see later that it transfers amino acids to the, to the ribosome. And there are 20 types, or well, 20 types of amino acids. And the three ribosomal RNA are RNA, which are made in a nucleus and mix up the ribosome. So if you look at this picture of this ribosome here with the mRNA and the tRNA, these are all RNA. The only thing that's not RNA in this photo is uh, the growing polypeptide chain, which is made out of multiple amino acids. Let's talk about each and every type of RNA. First, there's the mRNA. mRNA is single-stranded. It has the bases A, U, C, and G, adenine, uracil, cytosine, and guanine. It's a copy of gene that codes for polypeptide. It's made in a nucleus, and then it moves to a ribosome, and it codes for a sequence of amino acid, just like DNA does, because it copies the code from DNA, right? Um, and as mentioned just now, three bases on the mRNA is called a codon. The mRNA sequence is really a series of codons, and the sequence of codons dictate which amino acids will be added. Again, the triplet code has three bases, RNA has three bases, and the three bases code for one amino acid. Now, you have to understand that there is a point that it signals it to start and end on the mRNA. Now, the start codon is called AUG. And AUG always codes for methionine, which is the airy first amino acid in a polypeptide chain. AUG, August. Okay, AUG codes for methionine, and you can see it here. Now, three stop codons are uh, present as well. So there's a start point, and there's a stop point, and that stop point is this stop codon. U AA, UAG, and UGA. I have it in my head as a little chant. Uh, 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 uag, and uga. And these three things code for a stop codon, which is no amino acid. Now, if you're using the old version of the textbook, the textbook before 2022, the old textbook got this wrong. So make sure you correct in your textbook and you check if it's correct in your current textbook. In the current textbook that is made in 2022, made for 22 syllabus, it's fine. Yeah. But yeah, there's a starting point and the ending point on the mRNA itself. Next, RNA. RNA. Now, tRNA stands for transfer RNA. It's quite convenient that it's also shaped somewhat of a T. Uh, we are more accurately really it's clover leaf shape because it has these three loops. Now, why does it have these three loops even though it's single stranded? That's because the bases here and here are complementary and can hydrogen bond with one another. So, this here are hydrogen bonds between complementary bases. How cool is that? Now the point is, the point of the tRNA is to carry the amino acid. There are 20 different types of tRNA or 20 different types of amino acids, and it carries a specific amino acid here, right, to the ribosomes. Now it has something called the NT codon. And what does the NT codon do? Obviously, it binds to the codon. That is complementary with and it brings the correct amino acid that corresponds to it. Now the anticodon, right, 
this is the right phrasing, forms complementary base pairs with the codon at the ribosome. More on that later. Now, different tRNA type will bring a diff will have a different anticodon and bring a different acid. Now the tRNA actually holds the amino acids in place, so it brings the amino acid to the ribosome and it holds it in place side by side. So actually two different uh, tRNAs can can kind of um, bind here. So there's one more that can bind here, bringing another amino acid and pull it side by side for peptide bond formation between the two amino acids at the ribosome. And after it joins this, uh, this tRNA can detach from the amino acid and leave the ribosome and be reused. So this tRNA that is free now can go and pick up another amino acid and can come back to the ribosome. So those are the traits of tRNA. It will become clearer what they do soon. Trust me. Last RNA that's involved here is ribosomal RNA. You don't need to memorize these numbers. Just know that rRNA is ribosomal RNA and they make up the ribosome. They are also single-stranded. They are made in a nucleus and together with some proteins, they assemble into ribosomes and they have one large subunit and one small subunit. There is two types, the 70S and 80S. And if you don't remember that, refer back to chapter one where you learned that. Definitely. Now, what do they do? Now, our ribosomes are site of protein synthesis, aka translation. It's a site of translation where it translates mRNA into protein. There are two subunits, as we said just now, small, and there's a big one. Now, there is small subunit as a binding site for mRNA, as you can see here. The large one is really sites for tRNA. The three sites are labeled E, P, and A. You don't need to know what they stand for. Now, P and A are two binding sites for tRNA carrying those amino acids. So maximum two at a time can kind of come to the ribosomes and sit there and, you know, do their thing. The E site is the tRNA exit site. So maximum two, and then you get shoot off. So one gets in, one gets shoot off. Fine. Now, also, uh, the large subunit also contains peptidyl transferase, which catalyzes the formation of peptide bond to form a polypeptide. Peptide bond, obviously, in between two amino acids to form a polypeptide. So yeah, those are the RNA needed for protein synthesis. Now, we need to understand that this stuff requires enzymes. It requires ATP and it, require, it, it occurs in the G1, G2 base during interface, okay, which you have learned in the previous chapter. Now, what other things do we need? So it's not just RNA. What else do we need? It needs ATP obviously. Uh, enzymes needed specifically are also helicase. And helicase, right, uh, you can derive it from the name, is to break hydrogen bonds to separate two DNA strands. Uh -huh. Very familiar to uh, DNA replication that you learned in the previous videos. Now, these helicase would break this and pretty much unzip the DNA. And zip is not um, a professional terminology, proper terminology, separate to DNA strands is. Number two, RNA polymerase. RNA polymerase. So what does RNA polymerase make? RNA, not to be confused with DNA polymerase, which synthesizes DNA. So RNA polymerase synthesizes a new strand of RNA, and just like DNA, Polymerase, it only can travel in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction, it's, and its main function is also to catalyze the formation of phosphatase bond. And the third enzyme, we have already heard it actually, is peptidyl transferase, which is needed to catalyze the formation of peptide bond at the ribosome in order for the synthesis of a polypeptide chain. Now we have all the things we need, we've gathered all the information, let's put it together, shall we? Let's start from the first part, 
transcription. Mm. So transcription, this is what happens. Transcription is again copying of DNA, which is a gene, to RNA. Yeah. Number one, you need the double helix to unwind. And number two, you need the helicase to break the hydrogen bonds. Now, only part of the DNA unwinds because you only need the gene. You don't need the whole thing. You just need the gene, which is the section of DNA, the specific sequence of DNA that codes for protein. So only part unwinds. Helicase breaks the hydrogen bonds and separates the two DNA strands and only one strand is used as a template here. Now, there is a transcribed strand or a template strand, and there's a non-transcribed strand, and also called the coding strand. Okay, but only one strand acts as a template, which is this one right here. Now, what happens next is interesting. It's kind of like the replication, but RNA instead, because free RNA nucleotides come in complementary base pair with the DNA template strand, aka it forms hydrogen bonds, right? And after it forms hydrogen bonds, right, this is a spontaneous process without any enzymes. After it forms hydrogen bonds, RNA polymerase can attach a template and catalyze the formation of mRNA by joining these activated RNA nucleotides together. So if you look at the animation just now, uh, you realize this hand, this hand here is uh, RNA polymerase. Uh, what is it doing? It is joining the RNA nucleotides together. Hydrogen bonds are spontaneously formed, but uh, you do need the RNA polymerase to catalyze the phosphodiester bond formation. RNA forms in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction. Now, this is not the final transcript. This is the primary transcript or the pre-mRNA. What we need to do now is to process that. The pre-RNA has exons and introns. Introns are removed via RNA splicing. These are non-coding sequence, means they do not code for any proteins, and they can be removed. Exons are coding sequences uh, and therefore are joined together to form mature mRNA. Only after this point, right, mature mRNA, the final mRNA is done and can leave the nucleus via the nuclear pore. Phew, so far, so good. <laughs> yes, so transcription is RNA being copied from DNA, very similar to DNA replication with a few modifications here and there. And then there's RNA processing, right? Then this mRNA goes to translation at the ribosome. So stage three, translation, let's go. So number one, mRNA binds the ribosome. Well, technically the ribosome kind of assembles around the mRNA as well, as you can see in this animation. And it always starts at the start codon. So it can have many sequences in front, but it will start, it will detect the first codon AUG as the starting point. This codes for methionin. So the tRNA carrying methionin, which is the specific amino acid, specific is a specific word, I always say. So it carries that specific amino acid to the ribosome and it binds to a large subunit of the ribosome. Now it has this specific tRNA anticodon for the amino acid and uh, it knows that it's the correct tRNA because the anticodon of the tRNA will complementary base pair to the codon on mRNA by forming hydrogen bonds. I recommend memorizing the sentence, uh, not because you know, uh, not because like I want you to memorize every single line, but because this this sentence, simple sentence, kind of comprises a lot of information. Uh, and you can do that without a lot of thinking if you memorize it. So you're faster when you're right. Okay, so anticodon of tRNA. So tRNA has these three exposed bases, remember? Complementary base pairs basically form these hydrogen bonds between these bases, right, with the codon of the mRNA. 
to see a lot of information in one sentence. Uh, and what does it do? Well, it binds, and this is how it knows it's the right amino acid, the right specific sequence, specific amino acid. And a second tRNA molecule can then come to this ribosome and bind. Okay, it will bind with the next codon on mRNA. And as we, as we learned just now, two tRNAs can bind the ribosome at the same time. Two tRNAs can hold those two amino acids in place side by side for peptide bond formation, which is catalyzed by peptidyl transferase. And you can see this in this animation. One tyranny other comes in, peptidyl transferase works, and that amino acid gets joined to the other one uh, through a process of condensation. So yeah, after that, the tRNA can leave because the ribosome moves along one codon more on the mRNA. And the next tRNA comes and binds. Right? And the amino acids are added one at a time each way. The previous tRNA detaches, it moves away, and you can see this in this animation on the right side. I didn't make it, by the way. Right, it's super I did. Amazing job. I love it. Uh, and this process kind of continues until the stop codon is reached. Uh, the stop codon, you have to memorize it like a start codon. Start codon is A U G. And stop codon, I pronounce it as U A A, U A, and Uga. Repeat that seven times. Sounds funny. However, it's very useful in order to remember the stop codon. So, yeah, that is translation. You have completed the entire process. Whew. There's step one transcription, and then there's RNA processing between, and there's translation in this beautiful GIF by Amoeba Sisters. Check out their website. They also they do perfect, beautiful animation, and they are so cute. Check them out. They're amazing. Uh, anyways, uh, I just want to add a few things for translation. Um, you usually imagine it as one ribosome at a time. However, in real life, one mRNA can give rise to many polypeptides, many copies of the same polypeptide. So many ribosomes are traveling down the mRNA at the same time. You can see that this one is just forming and this one's almost done. And it's kind of cute, right? It's like a factory line. And this is efficient because this means you your cell just needs to produce one mRNA and the ribosomes like can copy it many, many times over to uh, produce a fast response to the cell for the cell's needs. Now, the next thing to know is also that mRNA is actually short-lived and uh, this is for a reason because this means that production of protein is only for a short period of time and this is good because this means that gene expression can be controlled so you produce something for a short time only if you want it to be produced for a longer period of time you will need to keep producing mRNA but if you don't want to have that protein anymore just stop Right, and the mRNA will kind of break down itself, and therefore the gene expression will stop. Gene expression just means like the conversion of DNA to mRNA to protein. So there's a lot of control, right? This prevents too much product from forming, and this is efficient for energy use and kind of intuitive for different sort of um efficient for a lot of sort of processes. But yeah. This is a little summary slide. We can see here the different terminology when it comes to different parts of the protein synthesis. There's DNA, three bases called triple code, mRNA, three bases called codon. The tRNA doesn't carry the data for the protein synthesis, right, per se, but it has anticodon that can bind with codon to ensure that the tRNA brings the correct amino acid to uh, the polypeptide chain formation. Yeah, to the ribosome. So there are terminologies there that you need to get right. Now, one thing you need to know is also how to decode whatever triplet code or codon they give you or anticodon to give you to see uh, what protein it is. Because as we know, there are 24 different combinations 
of these sequences found in 20 different proteins. And the researchers have did such a great job, they built a table. Uh, this is a codon table, and this is how you read it. For example, we have AUG, which is methionine, right? So how do we look it up? This is the first position, A, second position, U, so it's this box right here, and G is here. So this AUG codes for methionine right here. Now be careful, this is a codon table, but there's also such thing as a triplet code table. Codon is mRNA sequences, you can tell because it's uracil. Uh, DNA is uh, wouldn't have uracil, they would have timing instead of uracil. Yeah, so be careful with that. So let's see this uh, example. So this, they can actually give you the sequence and kind of ask you to figure out the sequence of amino acids. So let's try it out. So TAC, right, if you transcribe that, it will become A, there's no T in our mind, so U, G, right, there is, there is A, C, U, Pause the video if you want to do this on your own first and then check later. And there's G, G, C, and there's U, U, U. Don't forget, there's no T, and there's U, A, A. So the tRNA, let's go. So this is the tRNA that will come and bind with the codon, is the anti codons. Uh, we can try it. So U, A, C, right? UGA, UAU. Wait, hang on a minute. No, that's not right. <laughs> My bad. Uh, uh, huh, huh. AUA, GCC, CCG, AAA, and AUU. Now, if you don't realize yet, you realize that tRNA and DNA has. Because you convert it twice, right? So converting it twice is the same thing. So basically, DNA and tRNA is the same, except that T is U. It's the same, except T is U. The same as T is U. See, these are exactly the same here, except T is U. Ah, how interesting. Because converting twice equals to converting once. So pro tip, if you are converting from TNA to DNA to tRNA or vice versa, um, it's the same, except tRNA has U and DNA has T. However, if it's mRNA, you will have to figure it out. Okay, anyway, that's not the question. The question is, find out the sequence of amino acids. Okay, okay, okay. Now, this is a codon table, so you must look at the codon, which is mRNA. AUG is methionine. Um, we know that because we memorized that, so met. Uh, a C U A C U is tronin. Uh, the reason why I know what it stands for is because I've stared enough tables. Uh, don't worry about the names. You don't need to memorize the codon table. You don't need to memorize the names. Just follow what they give you, okay? Now U A U U A U is tyroxine, so T Y R C G G C G U. G is arginine, CCG, let's try it. Okay, this is confusing now, let's erase the marks. Uh, C, no, 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 GGC, GGC, codon, codon, G, G, C. So that is fly, right? Actually, I could have stopped at GG because all of them would fly. And that's AAA, AAA, -A -A -A, and that's lysine. Don't worry, don't need to memorize them. And then there's UAA. Hang on a sec. Oh, shucks, I messed up again. It's late at night. Okay, guys, go back, go back, go back. What did I do? mRNA codons. mRNA codons. So CGG. Cracking my work. GGC. G. G. C. Gly. Okay, that's right. U. 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 That's Phenomenon, F E N, F H E, yeah, P H E. My brain doesn't work anymore. U A A, U A A. And U A A stop. Oh, we should know that because kind of, we, we kind of memorized that. <laughs> anyway, stop doesn't code for any acid, so it's kind of like stopped. 
So this is the entire polypeptide. Obviously, the real-life polypeptides can go up to hundreds of amino acid long, or maybe three, right? Depending on the polypeptide. So they might give you a section. They might not give you a whole like code, uh, but they may give you a section or like a depending on the what that's like. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I hope you understand now. Um, watch my next video about mutations to, to figure out how to talk about mutations and how to talk about different things that happen at a different level. Now, I recommend that you do more past papers to practice decoding and do not do it and like like I am doing right now because you will make mistakes. And that's it for this particular video. I hope it helped. Good night. Bye-bye.